Exercise 2. Fortuna Company purchased merchandise for resale from Lamar Company with an invoice price of $20,200 and credit terms of 310 net 60. The merchandise had cost Lamar $13,776. Fortuna paid within the discount period. Assume that both the buyer and the seller use a perpetual inventory system. Requirement 1. Prepare entries that the buyer should record for the purchase and the cash payment. As we saw in Exercise 1, when we purchase merchandise on account using a perpetual inventory system, the journal entry debits merchandise inventory for the invoice price, 20200 and credits accounts payable for the same amount. Fortuna then pays within the discount period. The debit to accounts payable, 20200 eliminates the payable balance. Credit merchandise inventory for 3% of the $20,200, $606, and credit cash for 19594 The balance in merchandise inventory, 20200 minus 606, equals the amount of cash paid, 19594 Requirement 2 asks us to prepare entries that the seller should record for the sale in the cash collection. From the seller's perspective, this generates an account receivable. Debit accounts receivable, 20200 Credit sales revenue, 20200 But one piece of information that the seller knew that the purchaser did not know is that the inventory had cost 13776 And remember, we're using a perpetual inventory system, a scanner system. Once these units are scanned across our scanner, not only has the sale been recorded, but simultaneously, the units are removed from the inventory database. This journal entry is a debit to the expense account, cost of goods sold, 13776 and a credit to merchandise inventory. Now let's talk for a minute about cost of goods sold. Cost of goods sold is an expense account. In fact, it's usually a store's biggest expense, but it doesn't have the word expense included. Prepaid insurance turns into insurance expense. Supplies turns into supplies expense. It would have been nice had they said that merchandise inventory turns into merchandise inventory expense. And although it does in substance, the name is not merchandise inventory expense, it's cost of goods sold. Anytime you see cost of goods sold, think inventory expense. This journal entry is a clear example of the matching principle. In this case, the expense, cost of goods sold, is recognized simultaneously with the revenue it helps generate, sales of 20200 It's important to remember that anytime there's a sale in the perpetual inventory system, two journal entries are recorded, the sale and its related cost. Lamar then receives payment within the discount period. Debit cash for 97% of 20200 19594 Credit accounts receivable for the entire 20200 as Fortuna expects us to stop billing for the entire amount. And then we need an additional debit to hold the 3% discount. We no longer have the inventory, so we can't use the inventory account. Instead, we use the Contra Revenue account, Sales Discounts. Sales Discounts will be subtracted from sales on the income statement. As a contra account, its purpose is to reduce the value of another account, in this case sales, in a way that preserves the original information. We want to be able to track the total amount of our sales and to what extent our customers are taking advantage of the 3% terms offered. So are these early payment discounts really a great deal? Requirement 3 asks us to assume that the borrower purchased enough cash to pay the balance on the last day of the discount period at an annual interest rate of 8% and paid it back on the last day of the credit period. Compute how much the buyer saved by following this strategy. So we're asked to calculate the buyer's net savings. We know that the purchaser was able to satisfy a $20,200 debt with cash of $19,594, a savings of $606. But in order to do that, they need to borrow the net amount, 19594 So we'll calculate interest expense equal to the principal, 19594 multiplied by the rate, 8%. And here's the tricky part. The time period is the number of days that they had to borrow the money early. They're paying 50 days earlier than they had to. So they'll incur an additional amount of interest for 50 days out of 365. So if we multiply 19,594 by 0.08 by 50 divided by 365, interest expense is 
So does it make sense to incur an additional expense of 214.73 to save $606? The net savings is $606 minus 214.73, net savings of 391.27.